Good day, fellow rockers and moshers. Welcome to the Metal Connection, the connection to all things metal. I'm J Dub, and joining me, we got. I am David Biggs. I'm your rock and roll big dog. And today, I'm um, actually a special guest. I'm also your rock and roller explorer. I see metal in your future. Oh, man. That's funny. I thought you were going to take it away and do like the intro of the whole show. I was like, oh, yeah, right on. He's, he's hosting this show. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought I mean, you were going to take it away. Yeah, so today we're doing our, uh, we're doing our top eight rage. Oh, you're going to do uh, it? Yeah, sir. Our top eight rage picks. Rage being a German heavy metal band that started in the 80s. Uh, Mr. P.V. Wagner is the leader. And this is going to be, uh, we're going to go back and forth, one and one. Our top eight picks. Here we go. Jamie, take it away. Yeah. Actually, you know what I was going to bring to you right before we hit record? I was like, oh, I'll save it until we, we hit record. Was, uh, yeah, Rage from Germany. And did you know that he was in, uh, Peter Pivney Wagner was in Avenger before Rage? He was in a band Avenger. Uh, I'm not super familiar with the album. I try not to listen to stuff if I don't own it. So that's like a grail. I'd love to own it. Um, but I'm not super familiar with it. But I thought I'd bring that up before that he was briefly an Avenger before. I think that the the Avenger, some of the Avenger stuff turned up on the first Rage album, Reign of Fear, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what I read somewhere. I would imagine that usually happens with bands that kind of first kind of first years sort of stuff formative years anyway yeah anyway yeah like you said top eight rage so uh maybe i'll just uh yeah he, he, he sent it off to me so i'll go first and uh yeah even rage i guess i would be start off rage is uh kind of briefly with their sound touch on their sound i guess would be a good place to start it's a good place to start if we're doing strictly band is uh rage is a hard really super hard band to define their sound is i think at the core it's kind of like a speed like a speedy heavy metal but uh as as we're going to find out they've they did progress into everything speed thrash um progressive technical melodic classic um and melodic is can be even like poppy at times like you know kind of like these poppy melodic choruses and but it's all kind of it's like it's speedy at the same time and very heavy metal and epic and power and they kind of go into everything and that's actually uh why this was so cool yeah, yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I, I think um, at the heart of it, Rage is really now, especially now they're a power metal band. That's what I consider them. Um, in the beginning, I think they were, they were pretty thrashy, but there's always been, you know, there's always been a hint of, of melody to their, to their songs. And a lot of times we'll, we'll find out with some of my rankings that um, some of their songs are very, they're big, they're big anthems, you know, the big choruses and the, you know, that's stuff that I like. So yeah, catchy stuff. It's they, they are hard to define, I think. But I think that they've gone through different, you know, um, eras of their band, just like any other band that's been along for what do they have like 22, 23 albums at this point? They've been around for so long that their sound has changed. And I, you know, not that it's better or worse, one era versus the other, but it's a sign of development. Whereas some bands, they're around for 20, 30 years. You know, I won't name names, but ACDC, uh, they don't ever change their their sound or their vibe or their, you know, their song structures. Not that they're bad. I mean, I love them. Yeah, right away when you said ACDC, you know, made me think that, yeah, Rage wasn't wasn't scared to, you know, basically Peter P.V. Wagner wasn't afraid to huh, go in every, every direction, every direction, like, He's like, I don't care if people hear me sing. I don't care if people. I don't care if people hear me do a melody and a chorus and a strong structure, a strong structure, and then yeah, eventually he started doing uh, orchestra and symphony and uh, co collaborations and things like that. But 
Yeah, yeah, you know, it was kind of clear, you know, after after the first couple of records that, yeah, he, there was band was going to progress and he wasn't afraid to go in all sorts of directions. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I love Rage for that. And actually, we'll, I'll pretty much, I'll tie, we'll tie back into kind of what, well, what we're talking about, like with uh, maybe with I'm Swap talking about specifically right now, but uh, I'll tie back into that with my next pick after this one. But um, number eight for me, this bottom half was actually really difficult because I was like, I love Rage so much that I want to get it, it'd be nice to get like, you know, a lot of a lot of Rage albums in, but you can only get eight. So I was like, you know, I, I wanted to, well, you know, there's not a way you can get all these all these albums in with eight. So, you know, actually I found the bottom half actually really difficult. So it's like, oh, I, I'd like to sneak this in, I'd like to sneak this in. Or, you know, actually, for example, like uh you know well i'm kind of saying it's simple it's like oh i'd like to sneak in speak of the dead oh i'd like to sneak in traps uh uh oh i'd like to sneak in this actually was really difficult it's like oh i'd like to sneak in 10 years of rage that all oh, i you know that i really like the start of that album but then it kind of teeters off but you know that's kind of a maybe an end of a discussion thing some of that stuff but anyway uh end of all days 1996 yeah, end of all days. I said that right. Yeah, end of all days, 1996. I have a remastered version here, so probably when this, yeah, it doesn't it does say 96 on the back anyway, but um, maybe not the super, super heaviest rage, but I found a lot of the songs be really memorable, and there's a really unique oh, you got the stop sticker. Actually, one of mine rages had a stop sticker, but I traded cases because I hated the stop sticker. <laughs> I like the stickers. I, I, <laughs> I purged the uh, stop sticker off to a, a crappier CD band or whatever and clear up my stop sticker on my Rage. It was actually on Rage Black and Mind that I have stop sticker. But anyway, I find a lot of these songs are memorable. It's not the most heavy, blistering, uh, heaviest Rage album of all time, but and it does get a little long, I will admit, you know, looking at the back, there's 14 tracks, and these aren't like intro filler tracks, these are all like four, four and a half, five minute songs, 14, four and a half, five minute songs, so no filler, but, you know, there is a couple of slow songs here and there, but, you know, looking at the track list, there is a bunch of standout tracks for me that are memorable, you know, like the first four are all great, superb. And then there might be a uh, like a skipper, and then there's a bunch of great tracks, and there's a skipper, and then a bunch of great tracks. But um, yeah, higher than the sky, deep deep in the blackest hole, end of all days is great. Um, Let the night begin, fortress, face behind the mask, silent victory is great. And then the last track, I'm pretty sure, as I said, six minutes, kind of a slow track. But they do have some great slow tracks too, so I'm not gonna just. Uh, make that like a, few, a bad thing or nothing like that but um yeah I, I, it was good enough to get in there and i think that has a really unique uh sound production like mix to it, it has really cool i can't even describe it I'm not that great at, at describing like production and mixes like soundscapes it's really hard to describe but it, it has that really cool kind of ton like 90s kind of mix of mix of mo like what like the modern productions of now and in the 80s production is you know it's 90s it's a mix of 2000s and, and 80s but it does have that really cool kind of uh mid 90s production i don't know it's hard to like, explain it's it's it's, it's, re it's really cool it kind of just fits the vibe i think it fits the vibe fits the mood they nailed it i think on that like the production kind of T tutors well to uh, the songs and the, the vibe that's going on especially when uh, i sing when you say like deep in the blackest hole higher than the sky you know it kind of just fits the vibe but um uh, yeah i'll kind of just enough blabbing about that i guess but yeah i don't know if it made if you, i don't know if it made your list if it didn't i don't know if you could it did that. not it did yeah. not because of one of the things that you alluded to was I think there's just a like a fair amount of filler on here. So that's why I didn't. I mean, it's a good album. And I think actually Higher Than the Sky is one of their better songs. I love that song. It's a very, very good song. 
but I think, you know, this one didn't make my list because there was just, I think there's just a fair amount of filler on here. And um, you'll see with my, with my rankings, my top eight that I tend to like certain eras of rage better than others. And, um, you know, this was kind of the nineties were kind of a classic. Yeah. I think the eighties and nineties were a classic era for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And actually this for me is 1996. This was right when rage was, they were great right up until 96. And then he did, I think the one after was an orchestra album. I think it was X I I I or either. And then the one after, I think he put out the same year. I think there was a live, that live album and then the ghosts. Yeah. So yeah. this was right before he started experimenting with the orchestra stuff and collaboration stuff. And so, yeah, this is the last classic rage, you'd say. But yeah, cool. Off to you. <laughs> All right. Number eight pick. Now this is a. Uh, I was listening to it early before we went on, and uh, I really I have the deluxe version of this with the DVD, the concert DVD, and it's. Uh, yeah. Make sure I get the name right. Strings to a web. I always get I always get the name of it wrong, <laughs> but uh, strings to a web. And the reason why I like this one so much, it's got you know I think, when you think about Rage, Rage has had a monstrous amount of good or I mean virtuoso guitarists in their in their rings. They had, you know, like Manny Schmidt from the, who was in Gravedigger afterwards, I believe. And this one has Victor Smolsky. And he is just a monster guitarist. And this, the reason why I like this album so much is because it, it borders on, it's like prog rage. You know, um, you listen to the the first track and it's all proggy with the weird uh you know um crazy uh, hammer on pull-offs and stuff. It's like it just sounds like it's like Steve Vai playing on a rage album. So it's like, I find that very, very interesting, but it's heavy, but it's proggy. And then right in the middle of the album, they do the whole thing with the orchestra parts, the orchestra bits, uh -huh. yeah, um, the empty hollow part. And I find it very, very, it's a very eclectic album. And this is like, to me, it's, it's not thrash and it's like power metal, but it's like, it's got a symphonic element to it. It's just, it's proggy. So it's, it sounds different to me. And I am a big fan of things that sound different. It doesn't sound like, Rage to me doesn't a lot of their stuff doesn't sound like anybody else. That's why they're such a great band. And uh I just love this. I just love this this digit book. It's a really hard, thick book. Yeah, I, I love those digi books too. Yeah. It's got this big, big booklet on the inside. But this this album is really great. Victor Smolsky's he's he's an amazing guitarist. So this is this is the prog, prog rage, if you will. Yeah, the album, um, you know, just offhand, it's it, like most rages, they they, uh, they start off great, you know, the first four, four or five songs are great or whatever, but then uh, it does have that that three, four song part thing you mentioned, I, I forget the name of it or whatever. Empty but, Hollow. Uh, that's kind of a bit of a kind of... That's backwards on her, right? Cluster thing for me, that's kind of a bit of a skipper thing, but... Really? Uh, yeah. It's kind of fascinating I stuff to me. I, I break those down just as individual like songs, not as like a whole. I'm not I wouldn't like sit down and listen to the whole thing in like a 20, 20, 30 minute sequence. I would just like judge it as like like as like an individual tr track, like because th they are split up in individual tracks, like on the album. Like it's not it's not, it's not just like one 20 minute track, right? Like it's split up in no, parts. No, the kind of it's kind of like a, a group of songs uh, right in the middle of the album. It's like has its own kind of theme and they use the classical parts. And that's what's 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 different because not a lot of bands have like uh albums split up where it's like, you know, there's the, the rock songs and there's like a classical part and then they go back to the rock songs. So I find that kind of cool because it's very unusual. So usually if a, if a band does a symphonic album, the whole album is symphonic or it's live and symphonic. It's not just like one, maybe one part of it is. Well, I think maybe Kiss did that. Kiss did a part where to get a live four was maybe part symphonic and then they did part without the symphony. I think Kiss did it. But Rage, I think Rage is, did a little bit better. 
No, oh, I just knocked the glue off. But anyway, um, yeah, no, it's actually this is not my next pick, but we're talking about the the mix of albums where they can do uh, half symphony and half this. Well, they actually did that on this album where this did this album come before? This album did come before. This album came in 2006. So this is not my next pick. We're just talking about it. So I just want to bit up. Anyway, Speak of the Dead, they actually did that. So um, the first eight songs are like th this. Anyway, the instrumental. The first eight songs is instrumental uh, with the orchestra. But then the actual, so the first eight songs is like an or instrumental orchestra thing. But the actual second part of the album is a legit actual second part of the album. And I would consider the actual second part of the album an album all basically is the album for me. Like I skip that first part and actually just go to that, those actual, the real album tracks. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, if I counted right, yeah. There's eight actual tracks, and the actual eight album tracks are all, all actually great. Um, that alone, this album almost made my top eight. This out, this like if we were doing ten, it might have squeezed in my ten because these the actual out the actual album tracks are, are fucking great. So um, while we were talking about that, like they actually did that, yeah, where the first half was instrument orchestra, then the second half was a real album. So hey, hold up again. Sorry. Hold it up again. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The rock you get the detective, detective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the first part's pretty rocking. I don't know about that. Oh, you get into that stuff. I yeah. think the first part's kind of rocking. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of dig it. It's different. The metal detector saith. Uh, I kind of just skip it. It's like, okay, give me my metal. We, we, we've, 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 in, we've instrumental experimented enough, but. I get we we rage experiments enough in the metal side. I don't need it in the ex instrumental orchestra side. But anyway, uh, next. So what we were talking about with the uh, change of styles and oh yeah, the reason I have this album so low. It's gonna be a shocker. This is my this is my actual next pick. Oh, first okay, so Rain of, Rain of Fear, 1986, 87. No, I believe it's, it is 86. But anyway, yeah. Whoa, shocker. Oh, I like the red in yours. Yours is way cooler than mine. My reissue, obviously. But uh, yeah, you're way cooler one. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a shocker because, oh, yeah, that's really, yours is like the OG one, the, the OG noise one. Yeah, this was a... I think it's a an original one. It's got it's got the little cut on the on the barcode. Oh, cool! Oh, it's yeah, because cut then your, back, your back photo is full size. Oh, well, mine's full size too, but it looks a little different. But uh, yeah, my CD looks like that, and my back yeah. looks like that. Yeah, you, uh, got, you got the remaster. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, Sanctuary, I believe. Is it Sanctuary? This is yeah. This is the noise pressing. Is this sanctuary? Yeah, mine's a sanctuary noise kind of co-production. Anyway, um, what was I saying about row? The reason I have this so low, why do I have this so low? When this is a ripping speed metal album, like 1986 is their first album, they're full of energy, he's ripping speed. If this was any other band, was, this could be this could be their number one. If this was any other band, this could be a, a number one for you know. So uh why do I have it so low? Just because that is just it. it 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 just sounds for me when i hear it i it doesn't have that rage sound like you earlier you mentioned acdc or whatever and you're saying they're not, not developing their sound well uh that, on this album i could be mistaken for a, a different band i could be like oh like say if i heard two seconds of it say you know say if i was coming out so i heard two seconds and someone else was playing and it like oh maybe this is maybe it would it would take me a couple sec you know it would take me a you know whatever uh you know five ten seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever depending on the part it was that to figure out it was actually the, the first rage cd but if you were opposed to pick up some of the later rage you know it's rage because they eventually sound that they found that just unique rage sound you know, and peter peter's uh voice kind of just kind of just sunk into that 
that level where you, when you hear it, you know it's him. And on that fir this first album, he didn't quite have that unique uh, thing. And then the, the, they were just doing the speed thing. And again, if this was any other band, this this would rival for their number one. It, it, it's great. It is that great. But uh, the reason I love Rage so much is because they do get so diverse. And he started putting his hand into not just speed into everything into into melodies and just every every metal genre you can imagine all rolled into one so um yeah the reason i have this is my number seven and all the other six higher is just the other six are just a little bit more diverse a little bit more unique melodies and choruses that are more, more memorable for me as opposed to if i just want to just headbang and rage and say if i was going out to a concert and i wanted to get some adrenaline going sure i'd probably play this but if i'm just um listening to music for uh, maybe pleasure around the house i'm probably i'm most likely picking some other rage albums if that makes any sense so yeah that was probably a good way to describe it so yeah i'm happy with that but anyway yeah this is good old ripping old school 80s you know, raw kind of speed metal album, um, you know, with those touches of like Judas Priest, Exciter, and, you know, that sort of era. And, and actually, I was listening, listen to it kind of right before here because I was thinking of ways like, oh, should I have it higher? Could I get it higher? So I kind of just to listen to it. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with where it's at. Number seven. I'm not going to run through the run through the track listing just because um, I'm going to assume you probably have it in your ranking. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. So we'll probably talk it, about it again at some point. But you know, if any Rage diehard fans are watching and they're a little like, if that that's their number one, I understand that probably could be your number one. But I do like some of the. I do like the reason. We're doing rage because they're so diverse so if i was just going to listen to nothing but speed metal uh we'd be doing a speed metal show so i don't know <laughs> it's just it, it's not actually my go-to rage and uh i'm not going to pretend like it is because some of the other ones are so that'll reflect my six that are above it <laughs> so yeah if you want to go ahead yeah uh my next one you know, whenever when, whenever I hear about a new new rage album coming out, not a nude one because that'd be weird. A new rage album coming out, <laughs> I I get excited because you know they're so diverse, like we're talking about, and you never know kind of what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get the or orchestra rage? Are you gonna get the prog rage? Are you gonna get the uh, you know the the raging rage? You know the the heavier part of it. Um, are you gonna get the speed metal rage? But when the last album came out, I was super excited. And then when I heard it, my jaw hit the ground. This is such a cool and heavy return to form. Um, when I first heard the first track, well, the first track is kind of a kind of an intro, but the the title track, which is tra actually track two, Resurrection Day, I was like, wow, these guys are back. Um, and they've been through so many different. You know, Petey's been through so many different band members, and I think the the band fell apart. Maybe one of the albums before this, and then he had to get a new band back together. And he did, and and you know you never know what you're gonna get when you have new put new band members in in the mix. They came back with a vengeance. I mean, this thing is heavy, it's melodic. I mean, you got the this this digipack, which just, I mean, the artwork is a ten out of ten. I mean, look at that; it's just insane. <laughs> How much money they must have spent on this artwork? I mean, that that does not look cheap. That those paintings. I mean, that's not that's not computer drawn graphics. I mean, that's somebody did that. Some, some some artist who just has an awesome vision of what rage music. This is. I mean, the album sounds like 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 the painting here. Yeah, this, this is cool seeing the difference too. It looks like actually, well, I can see in the uh, logo here. Mine's like just more more bluer, bluer than yours. Much more bluish. And look at even the. Uh, some of the highlights are just more, more bluey. Yeah, and this is more more yellow, I guess. That that's a digit pack. Yeah. 
Weird. Is that a poster? Do you have a poster? Um, yeah, yeah, I got a poster. That's cool. Hey, I like different. My... Anyway, um, yeah, I'm sorry if you're talking, I cut you off there. But... Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, this album is just, it's a raging rage. It's, it's heavy. Phoebe's back and he's, you know, he's pissed off. What happens with a lot of these bands, you know, um, that have been around, these metal bands have been around, they, sometimes they tend to soften over the years. Like, you know, Metallica, they went through their hard rock phase and they try to come back and yada, yada. It's another discussion for another day. But, you know, Rage, I think, has gotten, I don't know, maybe heavier at times than they were in the, in the, in the 80s or 90s. And, uh, you know, this isn't the heaviest Rage album, but it's such a return to form that when I first heard it, I mean, this is like their 22nd or 23rd album. I mean, come on. Insane. Just, you know, insane creativity and love it. Yeah. How to throw that, how to throw that one in there. You know, I, I listened to that, that one a lot, so. Yeah, I'm going to end up listening to it a lot, too. You know, it is fairly new. It just came out in 2001, uh, 2021. Um, so I'm not going to pretend like I've listened to it like 20 times, but I feel like eventually, as time goes on, I'm going to listen to it a hell of a lot because just looking at the track listing on the back, there's already a ton of standout tracks for me already, just looking at the track list already. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try not to talk about it too much because uh, it may come up again at some point in this chat. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard for these bands that have been around for 30, 40 years to, um, to come out with new stuff that's fresh that people want to hear. Cause usually people, they go to the concerts all they want to hear is the, the old stuff. They want to hear the old, you know, the hits or the old tracks that everybody knows, you know, from the eighties or the nineties. But that, you know, if I went to, I've never been to a rage show, but if I did, I would want to hear stuff off the new album. Cause I think it's awesome. Yeah. That's why that's, why that's, that's another reason why that makes that band so special. Yeah. I agree. That album is awesome. Uh, yeah. Memorable tracks. And yeah. I'll try not to talk about it too much because I'm going to have to talk about it again. <laughs> uh, you know, give it away, but not, not too far away. But uh, so we'd be up with me. And I, th I think in brief, just chatter with online chatter, or whatever, Facebook groups. I think you mentioned this is one of your more favorite albums so I'm, I'm excited to see where this album ranks for you i'm thinking it's going to make your top eight but you could have just been saying oh it's a good rage you could have just been saying that i don't actually know but anyway my next pick my number six would be unity 2002 unity i know there's a couple different covers so people may not be familiar with this oh, man. Cover, but this is a i don't know a european digipack uh unity cover but 2002 it is unity what does the sticker say oh yeah this is limited digipack bonus track blah blah blah. but anyway i didn't stick that sticker on there i got this used but oh you got oh you got the same one yeah so they obviously stuck in the same spot the sticker but i probably came like that then obviously people wouldn't be doing that but uh yeah this is an all around overall a, a great modern rage album like if somebody wanted to hear a modern rage album I would send them down this direction. Um, not that I would say the album we were just talking about, Resurrection Day, might be a little bit more heavier, but this one has great hooks and great choruses. Like you know, after you get through the uh, after you get through the you know the riffs and things like that, and get to to the choruses, like they're they're very catchy, very memorable. Like if you're listening to it in your car or something like that it would be very enjoyable to like listen to your into your car like the, the hooks and things like that uh very melodic and melodies like you, you could sing along after you hear the courses a few times so uh yeah great unity great uh, album <laughs> great unity great album unity is and you know when i say it's like melodic and you could sing along by no means is that like weak, like oh, singing pop, poppy songs. No, like this, this is it's it's still fucking like 
borderline speed metal. We're still talking about like borderline speed, speed, epic power metal. It's like a speedy, epic power metal. And all it's very progressive. Yeah, it's just like a, a very weird mix. Like, I don't even know how I can describe progressive, speedy power metal, like, and with still touches of heavy metal. So it, it's kind of just touches all this, strikes all those boxes, blends it all, just all blends it all, mixes it all into one song, but does it all really well where you can digest it and sing along and have fun. Uh, even though it is heavy metal, you can still have fun with it. So um, they're not like taking themselves too seriously. They're not like talking about like cannibal corpse type stuff or nothing like that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just nice. It's, it's cool. It's, it's rage. I like it. And yeah, to me, like this is like, like yeah, it's actually crazy to think I picked this over reign of fear. And it's like, yeah, reign of fear. Like I'll fully admit reign of fear is way more faster and maybe more ripping than this album and like it might be faster and more heavier in that sense but this is just more diverse and to me when i hear this this just is has the rage sound like the rage sound that i know this is it like this is what i'm comfortable with with rage when i hear rage reign of fear it just brings me back to some 80s like speed like great 80s speed metal like that i can't really distinguish between bands distinguish between bands. this is very distinguishable like this is rage like this is the rage sound so um yeah rage unity uh i didn't really rip through the tracks but um I, this is actually a pretty consistent album where it's pretty well the whole album just has those um great hooks and kind of uh memorable hooky choruses and things like that and heavy you know obviously there's going to be some heck really heavy really heavy songs and kind of some slower songs and take you for a little bit for a ride but yeah unity Remember? yeah that may come up again i i, I thought so because i think i thought you said it was an album you liked but you could have just been jerking my chain like oh yeah i liked that album but it actually sucks i don't you know some people do that like I yeah, that's a good album. Sure it is, <laughs> you know, you know, that sort of thing. You could have been doing that, I don't know, but we'll find out. But uh yeah, well, let's find out. I'll just say this about 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 that album Unity. Um that line that rage lineup, Smolsky, PV, and um Mike Tirana, that's my favorite rage lineup. I think the albums that those three guys were on were just technically amazing, state of the art. Like I like to refer to that that Unity album as just like state of the art heavy metal, just the technical ability and flash. It's not really prog like that uh, um, strings to a web was, but it's like state of the art for me. And when I hear that kind of sound, that state of the art sound, it just just it just makes my day. I just love those those albums that that have that just like this cutting edge technical ability. And you gotta you gotta realize there was just three dudes making these making these these songs, three dudes. So it's pretty amazing. It's not like there was two guitars. I mean, at one point, I think earlier there were two guitars and on some of those rage albums. But um you got three guys making all those making all that music, just amazing. I mean, and plus they have, sometimes they have the orchestra or whatever. But anyways, my next pick, what were you gonna say? Uh, with, with rage, other than like, other than I know like the the Manny years, you know, I know like the Manny years. But other than the Manny years, I don't really pay attention too much to the lineups. I know Peter P. V. Wagner is on every one, and uh, with rage, I don't really fo- I don't really care or focus about the lineup too much. Like, I, I know the Manny years, and I know when he left. I think like right around May. I think it was. When did he leave? Ninety six or something like that. But yeah. But other than that, I, I have no idea. That they've been through so many different lineup things. Like, like I can't keep track. <laughs> I can get track. So then you know we're talking about the rage that does the orchestra, and I actually love when bands do that. And when if they do it well, some bands don't really pull it off all that well. Metallica, I didn't really care for all that much. I didn't think they. The classical parts in those songs matched with the to the guitars and all that kind of stuff so i didn't like any of the snm stuff 
but I think Rage was one of the bands that did it, and Udo is one of the bands that I think those are orchestral uh, arrangements of some of those songs were amazing. Some of those Udo songs, amazing. But anyways, my next pick is Rage Ghosts. Mm. And I was listening to this, was refreshing myself earlier about this with this album. And it's just, I mean, it's like, this is a heavier, this is more of a, I've got the orchestra going on. It's like a kind of a, got a doomy vibe on some of the songs. It's they're more mid-paced, not mm-hmm. super fast, you know, not the, the, the thrashing of uh, like execution guaranteed or um, reign of fear. But I mean, these songs are just awesome. Beginning of the end. I mean, when he hits, when he, when they hit into that, that classical part, it's kind of haunting in the beginning. And then, you know, the chorus comes in he's saying, this is the beginning of the end. It's just really, really cool. And, and at, at times I, I believe, or I feel like it's otherworldly. So it's, it's really, um, it's out of the ordinary when a heavy metal band can like transport you to an, an, like, and like give you another worldly sense. You know what I mean? It's hard because heavy metal is like, you know, fast and hard and heavy. So it doesn't transport you like say like like psychedelic music does like or haunting stuff, but when you get into the doomier slower stuff like you know the candle mass stuff, it like takes you into like another world, and I think they do a good job on this album with with doing that. So, yeah, so I'm a big fan of, of of different like a band that has many different albums. When they do something different and when they do it well, I'm a big fan of it. So that's why I like when I when I hear bands experimenting, and you know they've experimented with the orchestra before. What, what was on um, thirteen or something? Maybe thirteen. I thought so. Something, but I think also this was the this was the same guys. Yeah, this is um, this is it's PV Mike Tarana and Victor Smolsky. So it's that those core three guys that I really love. My favorite lineup. Well, this is kind of like their their doomier, their doomier album. It's just amazing how many how many you know genres that they touch on. So this is a slower album. It's kind of a a grower. It's not really the shower of um, you know some of the other albums we've talked about. But that one, that one I listen to. It's it impresses me taking chances, taking risks. Yeah, I like that. I'd have to revisit it if I was gonna speak on it too much, but um, yeah, it's, 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 as far as I remember, I, it was kind of just like very symphonic and um, maybe like, like movie soundtrack type stuff. A lot yeah. of mid-paced, mid-paced, you know, stuff that grows on you. Okay, you know, is, a lot, is a lot of it instrumental? No, no, they're songs. But then, yeah, it's all very strong. Well. Yeah, it's all, it's um, all songs, yeah. but they're, they're kind of, they're, they grow on you. They're not like, they're not like immediate hooks. Basically, long story short, is it's basically a skipper for me, but I'd have to revisit it for me to change my mind. <laughs> so I'd have to revisit it. That's where I'm at with that. Um, I think I did a, I think I did a German short, I think, at some point, and I think I actually put this as my number one rage at the time, but it's since moved down, um, maybe because the back half kind of, uh, not as many memorable songs as the back half, but we're at number, what, one, two, three, four, this would be my number fifth, so we're at my number fifth favorite rage, we're going to 1989's Secrets in a Weird World. I'm going to try to get the glare off here. Secrets in a Weird World, 1989. They were on no- Noise Records here, and I think mine's an OG. That was good. Maybe we'll find out if he has an OG in his match. But we got the Noise OG here. And uh, yeah, this is this is Rage at their peak, essentially. Or, well, not at their peak, but in their peak era in their per- peak years. I believe their peak years is from 87 to 96. I believe in that 10 years, sp- roughly 10 year span. I believe that's when Reed was in there just ripping peak class, classic era. 
I believe that for that 10 years from 86 to 96, that was Rage's classic era. Oh, cool. You guys got, got the black noise or the silver noise. Huh. Yours might be older. It, it does say made in West Germany on the back. Like it is one of those, uh, it is one of those old printed West Germany ones. Yeah, I think yours might be older. This might be a little bit newer pressing. Uh, yeah, this is great. This, the, 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 these, these classic albums just start amazing. Well, they, they're all amazing, but um, Time Waits for No One, Make My Day, The Inner Search, Invisible Horizons, She's Great, Not, like the song She, she Is Great, and Distant Voices, Without a Trace, so yeah, this is one hell of an album. This is great. This is this is definitely when Rage were the first album. They were kind of more of a, a appear kind of a speedy, thrashy type band in that kind of realm. Uh, kind of sh more of a shrieky type vocal, and then they kind of slowly started progressing on Execution Guaranteed. You can see behind me here, Execution Guaranteed, and they started kind of slowly progressing their sound on that album that's when it kind of the progression kind of started beginning and their next album they really kind of knocked the progression out of the park so they were kind of in their progressive era i would say this would be uh like 88 or yeah 88 89 probably all the way up basically till so currently, they're, they're still progressive at times. Uh, not as, it's definitely not as progressive uh, like the, the modern stuff now from as unity, unity and up. It's, it's definitely not as progressive as it definitely was at this era. But yeah, this is really cool stuff. Very interesting stuff where you don't just like listen to it and kind of numb along. Like it's, it's stuff where it really takes, strings you along like pulls you in kind of stuff like it's very progressive stuff like um not again maybe uh, i don't know if it's the best time to talk about this uh, also right behind me is mekong delta which peter pb wagner was a part of back in the 80s as well mekong delta for a couple albums uncredited back in the 80s because he was probably signed to noise or whatever and they probably wouldn't let him do other side projects i don't know the full story but um, Peter Peter was in Mekong Delta. He sang in a couple of albums, but Mekong Delta was super progressive. So it was just like that stuff is uber progressive. And th this this th the Rage stuff isn't as progressive as Mekong Delta stuff, but definitely some of that carryover from the super some of the some of the from some of the super progressive stuff that he was doing. And the Kong Delta carried over if, on these albums on Perfect Man and Secrets in the Weird World. So uh, I don't know where all that progressive stuff was coming from. Like he was doing it on the Kong Delta albums, on these albums. So it was just a very progressive time for him. I don't even know. Like if someone's saying, what do you mean by progressive time? It's just how you describe music that isn't just like super simple like has a bunch of time shifts and unique shifts and tempos and changes it can be very erratic at times i don't know is that a good way to just is that a good way to describe progression well progressive is like it's not like a standard verse chorus verse chorus you know yeah. solo outro it's more of uh you know where they use unconventional song, song structures and a lot of, um, yeah, like weird timing and tempos and there's a lot of dynamic shifts in the song. Maybe, you know, it, it it's um, a fast part and then you do a slow part where you don't expect it. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. kind of like, you know, like, like Dream Theater. If you think of Dream Theater, they do all kinds of weird parts. So they have these super long intros or a super long outro or like an extended solo or even like an acapella part or some kind of weird drumming thing you know that just not like a simple it's not like a simple song you know verse chorus verse chorus solo that kind of stuff yeah yeah great great description or great you know yeah basically description of, of 
tailing off to what I was saying as well. But uh, yeah, what's also great is that Peter also like found his voice and he wasn't like afraid to like sing and actually like use his his voice. Like uh, a lot of people back then were trying to like all, all the bands wanted to be thrash and act tough and be cool and sound deep and deep voice like he was actually like softening his voice up and getting more kind of screechy and lighter and singing and yeah these, these were the times where he was experimenting with that kind of singing and high voices and things like that and uh, melodies and progressiveness and technical parts and all this kind of stuff is all jumbled into a ball here but yeah this is great stuff killer old 80s production so you're getting that cool kind of sound and uh like energy you're basically getting that energy from that raw production right but uh yeah i think that i'd rip through the track so yeah there we go <laughs> yes i'm up sorry i'm up i'm up oh yeah yeah there you go yeah you're up next <laughs> yeah um yeah, I, I mean, I, I like that album, but that's just not my the era that I I really identify with. Oh, wow. um, it just I, I don't know. I just I like the later era Rage stuff oh. better. I mean, my first album actually was Unity that I that I got from Rage that I, that I heard back in the, oh. whatever that was was it two thousands early two thousands maybe. Oh. Yeah. But um, their subsequent album, I think, after Unity, I think it was this one, Sound Chaser. And um, I was, again, I was listening to this before, before we went on. And just, there's some amazing hooks here. And you talk about state of the art. You know, I, I said it before on the Unity album. This is another, it's like, a, maybe there was like another, it was like a trilogy of albums, kind of the Sound Chaser trilogy, I believe. And I think maybe this was the second second one of the trilogy you know how like uh gravedigger had the, the medieval middle ages trilogy well i think rage had kind of like a sound chaser that that's the that's their their kind of their symbol the sound chaser that monster i guess there's a whole story behind it um which i've forgotten i read about it i thought it was kind of interesting but this album you know state of the art it's my my guys again it's pv american drummer mike tarana and I think uh, I think he's a Russian guitarist, uh, Victor Smolsky. But uh, these guys, I mean, progressive also to me means the the the, the um, caliber of the mus musicianship is is super high. So that's that's also like I think part and parcel. You don't have there's not a lot of progressive bands that like don't have really great musicians because they they really wouldn't be progressive, right? <laughs> progressive. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, you couldn't have you couldn't have average guitarists. You couldn't have like me playing in a band like Rage. I, I you know, I couldn't I couldn't duplicate any of those guitarists or any of those squeaks or squeals on my guitars that that Victor does. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I can play any of these <laughs> songs on guitar. They're just so the riffs are so complicated, and he does all these weird um, squeaks with his you know with the whammy bar and stuff, and it's just it's really really cool to me. So it's you know it's a, I call it, it's like it's like a Steve Vai kind of sound, but it's it's not Steve Vai because um his guitar just sounds like it goes with the music. You know these guys just mesh together so well, and I was kind of I was kind of miffed when um when Mike Mike Toronto left, and I but they got the guy in from I think from Primal Fear, the drummer from Primal Fear, Andres Hilliger, I think or something, and um he's pretty good too, but this trio just made some memorable albums and just there's just this is just really hooky it's heavy it's fast it's got that unmistakable rage sound he's uh you know pv sings but he's got a bit of melody to his voice but he also can sing that the deep guttural stuff and then he can do like the falsetto i think he did the falsetto more in the beginning the real screechy high pitch stuff but i don't you know he's older now so i don't know how much he can do that so that's why he went to with the low lower guttural stuff which was really cool. So his voice has kind of developed over the years. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And, you know, I think he's had to um, change with the times as he's gotten older, he's got to, you know, adapt to a different singing style, but it works on these, on these albums. I mean, the guy, he can still wail and he's singing and he's playing the bass at the same time. He's playing these intricate heavy metal bass riffs. I mean, 
He's like Getty Lee. He's like he's like the Getty Lee of 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 uh, power metal. I don't know if he I don't know if he plays any bass pedals though. But imagine how difficult it is to sing these songs and then play that bass that he does with the bass riffs, and only being, you know, one part of three guys. Where this is not a second guitarist where you can hide behind. He's got to lay down the rhythms because you know the guitarist is is doing his stuff and he's got to do his solos and they're just the bass. So that's why you know, this band is so amazing. And this album really kicks butt. Sound Chaser. Yeah, yeah great, great album. I don't have it, but uh, I, try, I try to listen to it, you know, just to keep in touch with it until I do get it. But uh, yeah, you got any stand-up track, anything stand-up tracks that? Uh, that's oh, the, the oh. first track, War of the Worlds is great. Great old ones. I mean, I think every track is pretty good here. Yeah, it's like Unity where uh, those two albums, I think, were back to back. But Unity was just like, it's just consistent all the way through. Yeah, and this one, um, this one was from 2003. So I think they they touch on some current current events at that time. I think they touch on uh, September 11th a little bit and some of the lyrics. So they have kind of, um, <clears throat> they, they talk about some... Um, like like news stuff it's not just all kind of faints uh you know fantasy stuff um you know which is kind of progressive too some some topical they they, they reach a they their lyrics touching some topical stuff which is pretty cool so yeah great i'm, not, I'm noticing the unity symbol on the back there maybe that has something to do with the, the uh, triple um album series kind of thing. Guys, those are the those are the um like the symbols for the for the band members so the first one is pv symbol second one is victor symbol third one is, is mike tirana symbol so it's like member zeppelin zoso that's like their zoso symbols <laughs> yeah i know i never actually knew that all right okay cool and then also uh when you're showing yeah the album i was like yeah it just reminds me i have an old ep the extended extended power EP there with the uh, uh, sound chaser, yeah, yeah, with the character and with the character on the front there, <laughs> the old I don't know ter Terminator like kind of character. I don't know. And it's actually interesting because they actually did release a Rage album 30th anniversary called the Sound Chaser Archives, which is really cool. It's a triple, triple CD. Here's one of the CDs. Actually, it might be two CDs and a DVD. So it's a triple, kind of a triple album deal. And it's got, uh, it's got a lot of the, the B-sides from the, from those albums. Uh, it's got actually some Avenger songs from 85. Oh, it's got Avenger on there. Oh, wow. It's got Avenger, some Avenger songs, and it's got demos. So this is a uh, really cool. I don't think I, I don't think I've listened to this in a long time. It's got oh, demos and stuff all the way from '85. Meh. Wow. Yeah, it's really cool. Sound Chaser Archives. Cool, cool. Yeah, no, I, I would. Yeah, I think that's just like a, a compilation of some sort. So yeah. So uh, I know I was like, okay, it's, it's not an album that I I need. <laughs> Or you know what I mean? Like it's not an album I need to complete the studio collection, and then we can start getting all the uh, after compilations and stuff. But uh, I don't even have all the rages yet. But I'm mostly familiar with most of them. Um, I don't have strings to the web. I, there's a couple I don't have. But uh, you've already shown this one, and considering how new it is, it just came out in 2021. Considering how new it is, it's already made its way to number four for me. And I was actually just inspecting what number it was. I was making sure I said the right number. So I was like, yeah, it's number four. So it's number four, uh, Resurrection Day. And yeah, I think this is one hell of an album. It, yeah, can, being being so new, it's our, I think it's already made its way to number four because uh, I think over time, I'm going to end up listening to all my shitload because just looking at the track list and just running through the just you know just going through the tracks quickly 
I was like, these are all standout tracks already. And I've only listened to this album, you know, five, six times or whatever, but uh, yeah, Resurrection Day, Virginity, Arrogance and Ignorance, Man in Chains is incredible. I love Man in Chains. The Age of Reason, Monetary Gods. But yeah, this, this, is, the, the, like, this is like a classic album already and it's only one year old. So that's how good it is. But uh, yeah, I can definitely see myself listening to this a ton in the future because uh, it is that great I, I love this album I had to get it to like I had to get it physically because it was that good uh, I don't I don't have the previous one like the one before it what was it called not Wings of War but I'm getting confused with the Overkill Wings of War but uh, what was the one before um, there's something anyway I don't know I must <laughs> have it somewhere yeah the back yeah the, so we the, the other the one before um it's it's very similar to this one but there's something about this one just had a little bit more like mem memorable uh, just a bit more of a kick memorable memorability for memorability memorable aboriginal anyway um yeah all that kind of good stuff but yeah this is one hell of an album yeah just uh basically at this point a mix of what rage has been doing the last for Hulk, basically, you know, last 20, 30 years, a mix of power, speed, epic, heavy, thrash, riffs, heavy, melodic. Yeah, just a mix of all that kind of good stuff that you like in heavy metal. Um, again, yeah, all this gr the great artwork and package that goes along with this whole thing. She forgot, I should, I, I should, I got, there's the poster here, but I, I feel like every time I, I sort these things, it's hard to get it back the way exactly the way it went. And then, and then we got this. Oh, there's actually the band picture on here. We got that. Yeah, oh. that post is pretty cool. And I guess there's a band picture here in the back. Cool. Yeah, they're looking, they're looking mean. But yeah, no, I, um, I definitely toyed with the idea of like, oh, could I even have this album as high as four already? But as I was crunching things out, this is kind of just the way it happened. And uh, I think it's strong enough. I think this album is strong enough to have this number four. And you kind of uh, solidified, well, not solidified it, but you kind of reassured me just for fun. You reassured by just for fun, you reassured me because I think you already had it on your list. I can't remember. I, I know you showed it, but I don't know if you actually showed it because you picked it or we were just talking about it. But. No, I picked it. Yeah, that was my, I think it was my, yeah. Yeah. might have been my second, my seventh, number yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you kind of just right there, like we, considering this album just came out, we both picked it in our top eight already. So this is definitely an, an essential rage album, I, I think for sure. So yeah, number four. It's, 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 it's that good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It definitely and i hopefully it gave a rejuvenation to the band hopefully like hopefully it got a bunch of new fans you know with the whole this the youtube age right people going to youtube and check out new singles so i know they had a couple a uh, very strong single for this album so hopefully they gained a bunch of new fans and um things like that for this album because they're strong so i could see them getting a bunch of fans and kind of rejuvenating them a bit there for that so um yeah Back to it wasn't, US it wasn't the easiest CD to get. That that new CD wasn't the easiest one to get. I think it it they had a shipping delay for me. I didn't get it like really quick, so I seem to remember. Um, I, I didn't get it right, right when it came out because it was really expensive. And then um, I just watched it for a bit on the various sites, the Ebay's and the Amazons, and it all of a sudden. It, lowered in price just maybe that particular day or just a weird glitch or sometimes there's a weird price drop for half a day or a day and maybe i would just scroll along at the right time or whatever but it lowered in price i was like i better get this now before before i <laughs> snooze before you lose or snooze before you lose right isn't that saying so uh yeah i'm going back to you here i'm going to be back to you All right. Oh. So my next pick, I think this might have been the one before. Yeah. 
I think this might have been the one before um, Resurrection Day, but I'm not 100% sure. I might have missed, we might have missed that that Wings of Steel or something. I, I think I might have missed that. That's the only Rage album I might not have. But this is the angriest Rage album that I've ever heard. And this is why it's on my list. It's 21. Ah. This is the angriest and heaviest Rage album, I think, that I've ever, that I've ever heard. It's just really diabolical. I mean, look at that cover. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So Rage is really good at like, you know, their artwork matches the music on the inside. There's no, you know, you know it's going to be heavy and fast and aggressive. And yeah, I, I was listening to this earlier and I just had to confirm it that it was one of my favorites, one of my top, top picks. And yeah, obviously you can tell that I like later era Rage maybe a little bit more than the classic earlier stuff that everybody kind of raves about. Because I think um i'll go back to these these albums because i like the hooks and i like the guitar playing because i play guitar and a little bit of drums but um so i'm always listening for that really the production and the the musicianship and the hooks it's all important to me so yeah i mean i like those uh i like you know the falsetto screaming and all that kind of stuff i Sometimes I get tired of that and I want to hear something with a little bit of melody. And I think the later rage does a really good job of that. Plus I think the hooks, some of the hooks are really good. So I don't think a lot of people have this album, but I think this is when, this was when uh, Mike Toronto left the drummer and they got the guy in from Primal Fear. And, uh, it's them in the, probably in the studio. Pretty cool. Really, really heavy album. Again, it's like, you know, standout track for me would be, you know, like sometimes with Rage is that sometimes the first few songs on the album are really good and heavy. They're solid, like the first few, first four or five, and then they kind of peter out towards the end. So this is maybe one of those albums, but still, I still love it. 21. Yep. Modern day Rage, where you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. You know the sound. As soon as you put it on, you know the sound, you know the voice you're going to hear, like, and the, the the way you're gonna hear it like the delivery so like uh yeah there's just these modern rage albums you know what you're getting yourself into they're gonna be consistent they're gonna be good they're gonna be heavy they're gonna have melody so i think that's where 21 falls in it's just your typical modern kind of great consistent rage album it's like the musicianship on this is is, is flawless i mean these guys these guys can play and again it's, it's three guys it's like you know how often are there three guys in a band and they they're all virtuosos and they're just amazing you know other than like rush or hendrix or cream or something you know it usually takes a lot more than three guys to make this kind of music sound really good the german metal rush yeah <laughs> 21 yeah i don't have 21 either although uh, yeah, I haven't. I I've only listened to it a few times because I don't own it, so I try not to listen to things I don't own. So I would just go on the internet or my computer and listen to it. But uh, yeah, I don't own it, so I haven't listened to it a ton, not enough to really speak on it. But uh, I think purists are going to hate my rankings, you know, because I'm not, you know, I'm not ranking all the the '80s stuff and like you know a lot of the classic stuff of your ranking. But that's just where I'm coming from. What I'm listening for. And, you know, I've heard all these albums, obviously, because I have them all, except for maybe one. But, um, yeah, I look for a certain sound. Well, I know I had a similar reasoning. The reason I had Reign of Fear so low on my top eight, the reason I had it so low is just because it kind of just sounded like a lot of the other bands that were out at the time doing the similar kind of thing. And it wasn't until kind of later until they progressed and kind of putting in other elements and not just worrying about speed aspects when they when they started putting in all other elements and various other things that's when they found that rage sound and he kind of found that vocal style and pattern and uh way you know vo vocally he found 
his way of doing it. But uh, yeah, I just think some of the late, the later Rage albums and the middle era albums, they kind of found that Rage sound. He found that voice and you could put on a Rage CD and distinguish, okay, this is Rage. I, I know who this is without even hearing it. You could know who it is sort of thing. So that's what's really cool. And that's the reason I w- had uh, Reign of Fear was so low just for that reason. But uh, next up, this would probably be Rage's thrashiest album, I'd say. Um, we, we sent me a picture of it earlier that you were listening to it, but this is my number three, Reflections of a Shadow, 1989, I believe. No, it would have to be, it was 1990, because Secrets in a Weird Weird, Weird World is 89. I always thought this is 89, but this would have to be 1990. Yes. Not sure. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, well, I, I reissue, so I'm looking at the back. I was like, I don't see no year. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm very positive it was actually 1990, actually. Uh, I was briefly thinking it was 89. But anyway, 1990. And yeah, this is like, they got really thrashy and just really heavy. Um, they And he was still progressing. So he was it's very, pro- it's like progressive thrash. Like this is progressive thrash. It's very heavy stuff. And there's some cool kind of choruses that you can sing along to at times, but uh, that's human bond. <laughs> it just comes out with this banger. Although the, the, you think it's a you would think it's a weird track, but um, but at the track title, that's human bond. You would think it's weird, but it's not. But uh, true face and everyone. That's a cool kind of epic, to, epic tune. Just when I read the song title, I can hear the chorus in my head. I can hear him singing that true face in everyone. I can hear him singing that. So uh, that's the telltale sign right there. But uh, Reflections of a Shadow, the title track. Uh, Waiting for the Moon. Oh, my God. Waiting for the Moon. They should have put a video out for that song. I don't know. Maybe they did. But they should have put out a music video of that song. That could have been a huge hit song for them. Oh, my God, Waiting for the Moon. <laughs> Whoa, that's a hit song right there. Or it should have been. But, yeah. Oh, it does say 1990. I'm just seeing now. Digitally remastered in 1990. But, anyway. Uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is incredibly fun. Like, fun, progressive, thrash. There's choruses. It's catchy. It's heavy. This is, like like perfect rage like this is pretty much like perfect essential uh rage i'd say <laughs> that one i mean i was listening to in my car earlier like i yeah, I, I texted you the picture i uh, that one to me just doesn't have the doesn't have the hooks for me oh wow. uh, just doesn't have the hooks for me i was listening i listened to it twice and um i'm like just doesn't it didn't cut it for me but you know i can see what you were talking about and i i can see why 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 you like it just for me it just it's like meh that one's just a meh for me it's good though but it's a meh yeah nice crunchy guitar um yeah it's all around great yeah and i i definitely say this this is actually i would actually say this is their most thrashiest album if that would be like a if somebody's like a thrash purist and they can really digest or like differentiate all this stuff, I'd say this is probably Rage's thrashiest album. Like, I think you're right on the money with the progressive thrash uh, but, uh, label. Yeah, kill, killer riffs, kill, killer everything, killer, killer like uh, melodies, choruses, riffs, everything, all that stuff. It's just everything, everything is working on that album. It's great. So I'm going to go back to um, I'm going to break from my tradition of picking the uh, the later Rage albums, and my my number three pick here is going to be when they had the dual guitars going, and I was listening to this past week actually, and we just got funny story. Me and Jamie just got the same vinyl within like days of each other, yes. and uh, execution guaranteed. Um, this is not the vinyl, obviously, but we got the vinyl around the same time. He found he got his online. I I, I don't buy anything online, so. I get mine from stores and I saw it in a store. I paid 11 bucks for it. It's like, I think it was a white label promo. 
and I'm like 11 bucks. There was nothing wrong with it. It was awesome. So, I mean, I, I snapped it up. They also had a, um, at the same store, they had a um, Halloween walls of Jericho, but I guess it was on Discogs and somebody grabbed it before I did. So whatever, you know, they, they have a Discogs site and they reserved it or something, or they bought it off the Dix Discogs site before I can get to it. So I am kind of mad that I, cause I don't have walls of Jericho on LP yet, uh, but I'll get it. It's the ones that you, that we lose out on that we remember. <laughs> Like, yeah, ah. but I've scored a lot. I scored a lot of good ones lately. So, you know, it, it probably went to a good home and somebody will appreciate it. That's all I care about. No, actually, I want it, but whatever. I'll get it though. But, anyways, um, back to rage execution guaranteed. So, I was listening to this. I do all my listening in my car pretty much on my long commutes to work and, and home and whatever. So, um, the reason why I like this one, because they have the, uh, the two guitars and they do a lot of um, really cool stuff with the two guitars. You know, when you think of the two guitars, I think of like, I think of Thin Lizzy and I think of Priest and I think of, you know, the dueling riffs and I think of uh, some harmony guitar stuff, which I really like. So they do some of this in some of these songs and the tracks are just terrific. Uh, you know, the title track is good. The first track is good. Um, Hatred is good. I mean, I think this whole album is, is really awesome. There's, I don't think there's a bad track on this album and it's kind of, it's thrashy. And there's melody, and it's they're starting to get a little progressive on uh -huh. here, a little bit. So it's like it's 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 not like one genre. It's not, and there's different speeds. It's not all just fast riffing. It's there's some um, melodic stuff going on, and it's just it's so hard to categorize. Again, you know, like we've been saying the whole for the past hour and a half that this band, the reason why they're so great is because they, they just, they've developed the sound over the years and over so many 20 something albums, whatever, 20 plus albums. And they're, they changed their sound so many times. And I don't know if it's because of, you know, PV's genius, which has got to be part of, or the fact that they changed, they had so many different um, people in their, in their group, so many, you know, musicians in their ranks. Um, it's gotta be a combination of both. I mean, PV's just a really good songwriter and I think he's an amazing musician. And, you know, I don't think English is a second language, but his, his lyrics are awesome. I mean, come on. His lyrics are really, really good. Um, so can't go wrong with this album. I think this is a, this might be the OG or maybe like almost an OG pressing, silver pressing. I'm not sure if the silver pressings are the original ones or the, the colored pressings. I'm not 100% sure. I think maybe the colored pressings are, but I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. This might be some kind of a later reissue. It's that on CD is not super common. It, it, I couldn't ever get it. So I had to get it on vinyl because that's actually how uncommon that is on CDs. That's I've had this for years. It's actually, it's West German. So it's probably from the mid eighties. I would imagine, I guess. Yeah, that's definitely more of a rarer CD. Yeah. Now it, now it is. Yeah, so they got, you know, the, the two guitars. And the, the, these, these guys I've never even heard of. I can't even read the names are so small. But these guys are not names that I know. The two, the dual guitarists. But... And you've got PV and you've got York Michael on here. York Michael from X what's he's from uh he was in uh he's in Stradivarius, right? York Michael. He was in Stradivarius. I don't know if he played in Accept. I don't know if he did or not. But I know he's in Stradivarius and he was on Axel Rudy Pell, and he's one of my favorite drummers. One mm. of my favorite power metal drummers. The dude is awesome. He he's got a groove. That's why I, another reason why I like this album so much is because of the the drumming. He's got a groove, and you know how a lot of thrashy power metal stuff is just you know 30 second beats consistent they don't really have much of a groove this guy has a groove where he, he just he swings you know there's it's just not bang 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 you know double bass pounding it's got a grooviness to it that's why this album rings so high for me and i'm bringing with my tradition with the, the later rage albums because this one's so good Yeah, I it's as you can see, I have it up there, which means I don't have it 
right near me, which means I'm not going to be showing it, which means it's not on my list. <laughs> All those things given that it's up there and it's not going to be making my list, but uh, I'm glad it's, I'm glad you showed it because I think it deserves to be on the video on a list on on maybe a top eight or top 10 or even a top three or top five or age. Um, Again, I actually just got this recently on vinyl, so I haven't listened. I haven't listened to this album a whole lot. So just for the fact that I haven't been able to listen to this album very many times in my life at all, I left it off my list. Although I'm sure, if had I been listening to it since '87, I'm sure it would be on my list. So just for the fact that I haven't been, I haven't been able to listen to it very many times. Is the reason I it, it didn't make my list, but uh, it definitely is high quality killer old school eighties metal that uh, I'm sure if I had been listening to for ten years would have made my list. So that's the only reason it didn't. So that's where I am at with that album. Although, yeah, you know maybe if I get if I revisit this in a couple of years, yeah, that album will probably be in my list most likely. But just for the fact that I haven't been able to listen to a whole lot and uh, like I could listen to it even though I didn't own it I can go online and online and listen to it digitally and things like that but if I don't own it I, I don't I, I forget to listen to things or I don't like to listen to things I, I, I tried to like I tell them tried to I mainly try to listen to things I own or or listen to it to convince myself to buy it sort of thing but I knew execution guaranteed was good. It was just a matter of I had to get it and then so I could listen to it and, and own it. But anyway, um, that's where I'm with that album. So that didn't make my list. So number two, Reflections of a Shadow is good enough that it could have been my number two, but I love the way this album sequences and flows. And I'm glad I remembered to say that. To describe this album, because that's one of the main reasons it is my number two, because um, much like with later Rage and just kind of Rage in general, other than the first couple albums, but Rage is so great at blending everything together, right? All the things we've been talking about all the last hour, about speed, power, thrash, melodic, all this kind of stuff. And this album has all of that, everything mix perfectly everything you want the pa the thrash the riffs the heaviness the the headbang moments the melodic moments the catchiness the memorable songs this has everything you want but what's really great is the way this album sequences and just goes from song to song like just the sequence if the, i don't know what else i said to describe it but yeah black and mind 1995's black and mind this is the one that I had. This one had a stop sticker on it when I got it. This one had the stop sticker, and the stop sticker was bugging the shit out of me. So as you can see, yeah, it had a stop sticker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was bugging the shit out of me, and I got rid of that damn stop sticker. So, um, there you go. Oh yeah, there you go. You have that remastered one too with the silver side. But Yildo, yeah, I, I love this album because it is consistent all the way through. It has every style you you'd ever imagine. It has heavy banners, memorable, catchy kind of things you could sing along and feel great to. Epic power stuff, thrashy, heavy stuff, darker stuff. Um, it just it has everything, and just the sequencing, the track listing is incredible. The way it flows from track to track is incredible. Uh, I love this album. Yeah, this, this is great. Number number two for me, Black and Mind, but um, yeah, Black and Mind, uh, the, the first title track there, Crawling Chaos, Alive but Dead, Sent by the Devil, and this is really cool. This is this is when the first the first time the term a spider's web came up on um, track number six, a, a spider's web, and then he must have later rebooted that whole idea for an album basically a spider's web album so this came out in 2000 i mean 95 and a spider's web i think is 2010 so all of a sudden 15 years goes by and 
he reboots this spider's web concept or maybe he had maybe he just started thinking about it and started writing a bunch of stuff based on that i have no idea how that worked out but anyway his spider's web is actually on this track number six and what else we got here until i die is great my rage is cool start is great but yeah uh, th this album is awesome just the way it tr flows and sequences and track lists but yeah this is uh that's a great example of how you can how when they're picking tracks and making a track listing in order that's a great example of getting it right like a track order and sequencing and really that's they, they they got it so right it was good enough to bump that up to number two for me although reflections of the shadow is definitely heavier but the rage black and mine is still heavy like we're still talking about heavy metal here there's still speedy moments there's still all those um speedy heavy metal thrashy moments that that you want and things like that so yeah great album hopefully i talked about the best i could black and mine my number two <laughs> I definitely, I definitely like that one too. If I mean, if we had expanded the list to like maybe all of them, I mean, I, I that definitely would have been up there. Like maybe if it would have been like number nine or number ten for me. Yeah, I love that album. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm just looking at the cover again here, and I do see the character little jaws are at the top briefly there for a second. Uh, yeah, the sound chaser. Yeah, I just see they're they're etched in at the very top here. Yeah, you know, and at the bottom, see the teeth they're etched in. So I'm just kind of seeing that they are etched in there. I don't think I've ever actually noticed that until now. So um, yeah, my number two. There we go. And what is your number two? And was it difficult for you to find it? <laughs> um, I um went back and forth at the last minute with my one and twos. I mean, when we did the German metal show, I don't remember what my number one was. I don't remember what it was. My, well, maybe it was Gravedigger. It might've been, it might've been Gravedigger, um, the Reaper. This might've been my number two or number three. So I, it's my number two again, and we've already discussed it, but I think it's a friggin' amazing album. Again, this is, you know, state of the art power metal. This is my first Rage album. It's got the, you know, the Holy Trinity of the guys. It's got, you know, PV, Tirana, and uh, Smolsky on there. And what struck me when I first heard this was the guitar playing. I mean, it was just pyrotechnics. It was speed. It was fast. It was, you know, the, the, the pick articulation was like, perfect it was just like a virtuoso it was just i never heard guitar playing like this and they're just like instantly hooked so that's how i got into the rage back catalog so i first started with the the newer rage and then i went backwards into the 90s and the 80s this i believe was 2002 this is 2002 so it was right right at the turn of the millennium and the first you know the first track is all i want and that is just Oh my gosh, the intro and the, it's just the, the the chorus and it's just hook after hook. Um, Insanity, I remember that was a good song. Down actually was the first video, I think. They did a video for that song. It was Down. And, and I remember thinking how much better this was than the new Metallica album at the time that came out around this time. Was it? Um, Same thing, right? Saint Anger was it Saint Anger? Yeah. So I heard Saint Anger and I was like, what the hell is this garbage? And then I think I got rage and I'm like, this is what Metallica should have done, something like this. But I don't think that they're, you know, can play this kind of music. This is just, I mean, amazing. They're all three virtuoso dudes. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Metallica, they're great, but what they put out in the early 2000s and in the 90s just <laughs> didn't do anything for me if, I, if, yeah if, if james hetfield had peter peevney wagner writing with him metal like if peter was in metallica oh my god they would be producing so much better music yeah i mean if he was there and in, instead of kirk if, if he replaced uh i mean sorry if he replaced uh 
uh, Robert Trujillo. Yeah, yeah. And if he was in there writing songs, oh my god. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe they would have gone on a more melodic power metal. It would have been it probably would have been pretty cool. But um, you know, Metallica is not power metal. Metallica is or was I don't even know what they are anymore. They they're they're thrash. They're a thrash band. They're a metal band. I don't know what they are anymore. But anyways, um, no, this album, this album's awesome. And it's all, it's good all the way through. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, another reason why it's so good, you know, besides the playing on it is they do a lot of dynamic stuff. Um, that song, D.A.S. Ira is, uh, I think it's got some, some um, orchestral part to it or symphonic part to it. Kind of reminds me of um, Celtic Frost a little bit. Celtic Frost. Uh, yeah I set this world on fire was kind of like their not it's not a power ballad but it was like a slower more melodic song um really cool just a lot of, a lot of um different moods and different um i don't know just a different energy of this album a lot of energy all the way through so that's why it's so good and the hooks are just good look at these dudes yeah, this one does have really cool kind of hooks, really, really cool kind of co choruses and hooks, but it's really heavy. And but the production, uh, the production has been really clean and just bodes well to like the vibe of it. Um, if that makes any sense, but yeah. And you know, most American bands they don't have production that sounds like this, like this clean and this. Um you know it's 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 in your face you know <clears throat> it's very well produced and you know you can hear every instrument and you can hear every note really well it's not like you know they turn the bass way down or the, someone's leads are louder than somebody else it's like you know like their symbols here it's like unity they're all like equal partners which is really cool and when they're united they're stronger than the than the than the singular parts you know what i mean so that's why this album is so good because they're united and they're stronger together than they are by themselves. So that's why this album is so cool. So they, they say it and they play it. Where well, it's been, it, yeah. it, it, it made my list as well, because I think, it, I think it, it made it my list just because, well, not just because, but uh, main for, mainly for the fact that it was just like very well-rounded album all the way through like there wasn't there's no like uh there is one 57 57 second track track number seven but other than that every other track is like an actual solid song all the way through there's no like goofy stuff no weird stuff it's just a very solid consistent album and the production kind of uh is, really stands out. I don't know why, because well, all the later raids are great productions, but this one's really cool. I don't know. It just has a really cool kind of vibe and mix to it. Um, just like a very like a solid, like a solid ass kicking metal album without like trying trying too hard. Yeah, without trying too hard, if that makes any sense. I guess it's a few I I'm not vinyl. I'm, looking, I'm just looking for it here. You have Unity on vinyl. Oh wow, is it the same cover? I wonder. I, actually, I wish you'd have. Actually, I was gonna say, I wish one of us had the original cover, but the booklet is the original cover. So yeah, here it is. Here's the actual original cover. Yeah. I liked it so much. I had. I bought it on vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. How cool. so much I paid for it. Holy shit! That's pretty cheap too. Holy fuck. Still sealed. I would definitely buy a Rage on, you know, I would buy any Rage on vinyl for 17 bucks. <laughs> Knowing the price of vinyl nowadays, these days. Yeah, this would be, this would be 30, 30 bucks now. I mean, this, if it was new, it'd be 30 bucks. This, I don't know how much this album is worth. I know it's probably worth a lot because I don't think they were making a lot of vinyl of these in the early 2000s. But if I liked an album a lot, which I obviously I love, Unity album. I bought it on multiple formats. I mean, I don't think I would, this would be available on tape. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maybe. 
Maybe, maybe they were just, you just know. Get Tarana fighting the sound chaser. Oh, I don't know. I've never seen that picture. That's not on the back of uh, the CD. No, that's cool. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah. It's like his uh, his John Bonham symbol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. That dude, that dude's played an Axel Rudy Pell's band, I think, too. Mike Tarana. No. He's played with uh, Axel Rudy Pell. He's played in... Um, uh, oh, he's been in so many bands. I can't remember the bands he's been in. He's been in, he's been in a lot of bands. Yeah, that's why I, I try not to even try not to remember that stuff because, like, the German bands, they were all they were all in all the same bands. <laughs> all those guys, they were all just trading band members to band members, and the thrash scene were all trading band members and. All this, basically, all the scenes were all just trading band members all back then. It's like everybody through through two or three people, you could connect everybody through everybody, you know, through six degrees of separation. I think they would play like you know they would just gotta kind of get a gig for like maybe an album and a tour or maybe two albums and two tours or something, and then they would move on for some reason. Like a lot of these guys never really stayed with one band for whatever reason. They just it was their gig. They did their gig and they moved on to the next band because I've um, I've uh, emailed or like kind of been in contact through Facebook with some of them. And I'm like, you know, I asked what asked them about their time in the band. And they're like, oh, it's just a gig. I don't really remember a lot about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I asked um, Jens Becker from he was in Gravedigger and uh, Running Wild. Yeah. So I asked him about his like in the Running Wild days i asked him about something he was like oh that was just a gig i don't really remember a lot about it so i was kind of like no oh. he, he was around him all for a while <laughs> yeah yeah i think i asked him i had a question for him or something and yeah he was nice but he's like i you know it was just a gig for me i didn't really think too much about it which is kind of like you know when you have these albums and like, these guys are in these bands are like your heroes and they're like kind of a little dismissive about their these albums that like you hold in such high regard. It's like you're kind of like dumbfounded a little bit. And I was like, whoa, okay. But you know, like like anything, it's a job for them, right? And they do their job and they they get paid and uh, you know, it's not like they're collect like big collectors or something, <laughs> you know. But when you're a collector and you, you love these bands and like you just hang on every song and every guitar riff. It's different, you know. You know, unless you hate the band, you're dismissive of them. But if you love the band so much, you're like, whoa. So, oh, whatever. Yeah, I think sometimes there's that parts where um, he, he's just like nonchalant about. It. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, running wild. I guess I was in running wild. No big deal. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. I guess I was right. And you stand it's like, off. It's like, right? it's like, dude, I've got your posters on my wall that I've been worshiping and listening to the same. You know, I've been listening to, you know, Death or Glory for, for 30 years. And it's like ingrained in my mind, all the lyrics and all the beats. So, uh. Yeah, I think there's that. And then there's also, uh, what was I thinking? Um, I think I forgot what I was thinking. I was brainstorming something when you were talking. I was like, I think there's that. But then I, there's also like, um, I think there's that one, like the band member switches. Yeah, that's what I, uh, back to that topic. Yeah, the band member switches and things like that is I think also I think what does happen a lot of times I could imagine is they're on tour with a bunch of other bands. They go on tour with other bands and they become buddy buddy with with the band that they're sharing the room with or the band that they're sharing the bus with. And then there he's thinking then he's thinking, oh, I'm, I'm buddies with this this band and their guitarist just left. Well, maybe I could join that band maybe that's better greener pastures over there or maybe i'm having a funner time with these guys i'm going to jump ship and leave my band and go with them so i think that's i think that's what happened a lot of times is they were touring and partying back then and maybe he's maybe they're fighting with maybe he was bickering with a, a band member and he's in band that he was in now and then uh, they go on tour and he starts partying with a different band. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, your guitarist is leaving? Oh, okay, well, maybe I'm going to go in there now. So I think it was just a lot of that kind of stuff, like inter intermingling 
buddying systems and things like that and backstage buddying stuff and blah 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 well, plus i'm sure a lot of these guys if they're not like original partners in the band they get they get hired as hired guns so they get probably hired at a a certain like they get a certain um, amount of pay for whatever they do and maybe that you know they're just gonna do the gig and then they're gonna be done so they don't feel like they're an equal part of the band so i can understand why these guys would leave a lot or they would go to different bands because they're always looking for a better paying gig or something or more respect within the band because you know i've been in you know bands pick up bands and stuff and it's like if i'm not kind of like leading things and like people aren't following what i'm doing i'm not totally interested in like being staying with them so i know from my own little experience how it is but that's what i think goes on yeah i was gonna say uh, it's way, very off topic but i know um testament just signed dave lombardo and everyone's all hyped up they're like oh dave lombardo's in testament he's recording a new album but I actually read like the fine print media story on the, on the Testament, uh, Dave Lombardo signing and uh, like the fine details was that he actually hasn't signed on to the album. He signed on to like, I think three or four tours. He just signed on to like two or four, two to four tours. And then after that, they have to renegotiate again. So basically, Testament's going to bang out three or four tours with Dave Lombardo, and then he's going to have they, they're going to they're going to have to renegotiate a new contract recording. Basically, if they are going to record with Dave Lombardo, they're going to have to renegotiate that and all different terms and all different that. So basically, Dave Lombardo signed on just for three or four tours, basically, and everyone. But, you know, the media says, you know, the media does these headlines and everyone's thinking, oh, he's in Testament forever. And, but, you know, the, the fine print is he's only signed on for so many tours so far. So he, he could, he, they could not come to terms for the, uh, when they go to record a new album, they could not come to terms. And uh, Dave Lombardo could be out and they could be doing another band. There was just a change. <laughs> But um, yeah, very off topic, but just the band never changing we were talking about, but because uh, that was something that was recent in the news. But anyway, uh, yeah, my number one. I'm looking at it here. I'm actually, the, the CD is so dusty. I was actually wiping off the dust. It was like, it's like an original. I'll give away the year here. An original, yeah, you're going to need that to inspect the dust. An original from 1988. Rage's Perfect Man, my number oh, one. My number one. My number one. Perfect Man. And yeah, it is an OG. Is fuck the, the actual CD was so dusty. I was actually, you could see it. Uh, you could see. Yeah, I was actually wiping it off there. But I was wiping it off while talking there. But uh, yeah, Rage's Perfect Man, incredible. 1988. This is, well, Clearly, in my opinion, this is Rage at its utmost peak. This is a mix of everything that is Rage in my head, in my ears, in my eyes. <laughs> this is everything that is Rage. This is uh, Manny on guitar. So Manny's pumping out the riffs here. Um, and then he did later join Grave Digger Manny. But we got Man the, Man the Manny era with Manny and Peter. Um, a great fan favorite era every track is freaking incredible just running through the track list here wasteland in 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 the darkest hour you know he kind of says in my darkest hour in the song uh animal instinct perfect man sinister thinking love that track sinister thinking supersonic hydromatic is cool too um, a Pilgrim's Path, Time and Place, Between the Lines, Symbols of Our Fear, Neurotic is great too, but yeah, this is a super fun album. A lot of the songs are kind of just in that three, four minute realm, so they're not teetering into progressive land, like way out, way out into progressive land, so uh, any kind of progressive, progressive parts that they're doing, they are keeping it short, but complex enough where it's not just a straightforward album 
like it's complex enough where whatever they're doing, they can get it in three, four minutes. So it's not like super mind bending, mind melting, twisting out in the progressive ethers or nothing like that. It's not like super crazy, like seven minute progressive, not like that, but it, it is like for, for like thrashy, speedy metal, it's, it's progressive. So um, yeah, it's just very unique. The production is cool, kind of has that unique kind of late eighties production where bands weren't sure if they should use like a huge arena production or if they should keep it raw. So metal bands weren't really sure. So they were kind of just in that middle air, middle range. It's like, well, we don't want it to sound like complete trash, but we don't want it to sound like uh, arena metal, like in a Kiss 80s Kiss album. So it's like, you know, we don't want it to sound like trash, but we don't want it to sound completely amazing, like arena rock. We want it to kind of sound like somewhere in that middle spectrum. <laughs> so they were kind of in that middle spectrum, like a bit of rawness, a bit of goodness, a bit of, you know, kind of that stuff. So, um, yeah, all around great stuff, speedy, thrashy, epic power, uh, all around great stuff. I love this album. Yeah, I'd say favorite tr track. Oh, God, I don't know, just the whole first seven songs, maybe, but. Yeah, I don't know, Sinister Thinking, maybe Wasteland. Yeah, Sinister Thinking maybe is a standout track. Well, not a standout track, but again, maybe my favorite track of the album, Sinister Thinking maybe. But it's also cool. Is, uh, this one he keeps it fun and lighthearted. Again, this is not like a Cannibal Corpse type metal or uh, Celtic Frost or nothing where you need to get into headspace or, you know, dark and dark headspace. Like it's like uh, upbeat. It's like it's not upbeat, but like it. It's fun. Yeah, it's 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 fun. It's fun stuff. Like the way his vocal approaches and his vocal tone melodies is like fun, and it's all fast and kind of hoppity, kind of thrashy and it's melodic. But yeah, awesome stuff. Number one, perfect man. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't make my top. But uh, that that is an awesome album. Oh wow. I I don't know what, but um, I have wow. actually interesting note. I have that. I have the CD, the tape, and the vinyl of that. Ooh, the trifecta. The, the trifecta, the only raid oh, trifecta wow. that I have. I'm working on the uh, the execution guaranteed trifecta. If I can find the tape, I'll have it. <laughs> but, uh, well, you could probably get the tape cheap, uh, easier than the CD and vinyl. So, and well, you can get you can usually get tapes easier than vinyl and CDs of any band and very many albums usually tapes the easiest to get. Yeah, finding that 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 rage that execution guaranteed LP was a fluke. That was just a fluke. Yeah, yeah that's a great that's a great album. I, I I agree I agree with that choice. I have the same same pressing, but it's clearly not an original from OG because they're promoting the ones from '94. No, a reissue. Probably a, a '90s. 90s reissue yeah it must be because they're promoting the ones from 94 so. but yeah i was when i started the ranking i had this number one i did some shuffling and some minor rearranging and still at the end of it i still had this my number one so i was pretty confident uh to keep this at number one have this my number one yeah that's where i am with that happy enough with it um hopefully i talked it up best i could although i would imagine anyone watching still this far into the uh show is familiar with rage and you probably would have heard this and if you haven't this is my number one essential rage album that you must hear it is it is a great album i i totally agree with that number one choice for my number one choice it wasn't perfect man but I think it's close in, in proximity. It's not a later era rage, shocker. But uh, I was listening to this uh, again. I was listening to the, going over a lot of the stuff that I like today. And this one, I like it's my number one choice today. It might change next week. It might be perfect for me next week. But this one is my number one today because I love how anthemic the songs are. They're freaking anthems, which is what I love to hear. And shocker, number one is Rage Trapped.
Oh, it is trapped. The whole time you're talking, I'm like, is it trapped? Is it trapped? Is it? <laughs> oh, you thought it might be? Well, because you said it was in the proximity, so I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I knew the album after. Well, I knew it wasn't a reflection, so I knew the album after would be 92. Yeah, trapped. But anyway, yeah. I mean, come on. You've got Shame on You, Solitary Man. Whoa. I mean, that that yeah. vocal hook that he does on that. <laughs> Man. Yeah. yeah, solitary man. It's it's awesome. It's amazing. It's like worth the price of admission alone. And uh, you know, it's just fast and, and and thrashy and melodic. And you know, I've got Manny on there from Gravedigger. You know, I was thinking when you were talking, um, you know, when we were mentioning Manny and the guitar, see how he was in Rage and he was in Gravedigger. He's been on some really classic albums from some of these uh German power metal bands. I mean, he's he was on the you know the reaper and um i don't uh, well i think yui Lu, uh yui uh lulis lulis was on um what was the um tunes of war but i think that manny was on i don't know if manny was on the reaper but manny whatever manny was on like he was on the self-titled the, the grave digger and um some other stuff. I mean, he's just awesome. I think he was on Rheingold. He's been on some really classic power metal albums. So, I mean, the guy's just been a part of a lot of like classic riffage and just putting out those really mega heavy riffs. So, huh, interesting. You have, you have, that might be an older pressing. I have, this is a newer. No, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a newer one. Yeah, it's a, it's a great album. I think they do a, a cover of uh, Accept Fast as a Shark on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, near the back there. Yeah, baby, I'm your nightmare. I mean, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. And Beyond the Wall of Sleep, isn't that a Sabbath? I don't know. I haven't I, listened to that. I don't anyway. think so. I don't think that's an actual cover song of Black Sabbath. I think that's an original song. Yeah. So you know it's it's fast, it's thrashy, it's melodic, it's uh, got great hooks, choruses I love. It's got that that uh, that um, well, this is albums from '92, but it's got kind of that that '80s trebly sound that I like. Uh -huh. It does have a That's, really cool production. The trebly, the that real trebly sound. It's like I like to refer to it as like kind of underproduced sound. It's not a big arena hair metal kind of thing. Because I think a lot of these bands, you know, these these power metal thrashy bands are like, we don't want to sound like the American hair metal bands, so we don't want to go in that direction. We want to have our own our own sound. So I, I love that. I always feel like the '90s, like the early mid '90s, from some of, some of these heavy metal bands, they have like this, like a like a spacey hallway sound. I always think of it as like a hallway kind of hallway in the distant spacey hallway sound i don't know that's the way i visualize hear it maybe in a, a reverby or something yeah where it's just kind of just like yeah like yeah i don't know just a hallway spacey type b kind of production a lot of the 90s stuff were I really like a lot of that production stuff, but yeah, I like end of all days. Like this is 96. It has that similar, yeah, like the similar kind of, uh, it's just, yeah, it sounds really cool. I just, I just really like that kind of production. So I, I like this one because I, 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 this one's my favorite at the moment yeah. because of the hooks. I, I love the, the hooks on the songs. And like when I'm, when I was listening to it in my car, I'm like, whoa, that's yeah. an amazing hook. And like, you remember it the second after it's after the song's over you're like i want to replay the song you remember the hook like on a lot of heavy metal albums it's like there'll be a hook and you'll be like yeah it was okay and whatever but you won't really remember it unless you listen to it a lot this one i kind of remember the hooks the second after i heard the song so i'm like this is a no-brainer this is my number one this is super uh fun and i actually know specifically this album uh in particular where this album starts out incredible 
but the reason it didn't make my top eight is because the back half kind of gets a little uh it, it's still good the back half still good it just gets a little unmemorable as to where you know the first half you're singing all these songs all these courses and the back half gets starts to get a little lost not lost they're still good songs but anyway when you're doing these rankings these minor little differences is what you have to take in when you do a ranking so when i'm saying oh a two songs weren't as memorable as two songs on another album that did make my like it's these little, little tiny little small things that you do have to do when you are doing a ranking because that's what you have to do or else everything would be your number one or everything would be your number 10 but to different uh, but i would have liked to have gotten this in my top eight like i do like this album but again i had to nitpick the back half i had to nitpick it to get my ranking in order essentially my top eight but this was very close very close to getting my top eight like so yep. close. my philosophy on 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 um, album rankings is that if there are like one, two, you know, three or four, even one good song that's so good, the hook is so good and so memorable, that will still rank an album very high for me, even though there might be some filler material or some of the other material might be not so strong. That's my philosophy on albums. If, you know, you hear if the song is so good and the hook is so deep and you you're just amazing, that can make an album for me versus like the rest of the songs where it's like, Meh. So it's like, uh, for example, um, the Wasp album. This is like my best example. A Wasp album, um, Still Not Black Enough. There's like maybe a couple good songs <laughs> on that. And then all the rest are like really bad. But it's like, I remember that album because um, the first, like, I think track one or th one and three or something are so good that it's like, I like that album. But I like the material on it after those two tracks. I don't remember what the tracks were. Are just not not that good but it's a memorable album for me and i'll rank it up i'll rank it higher so that's just an example i think i'd be slightly different from you in that aspect where i'm kind of like more of an asshole in that sense where i'll actually downgrade an album like that if if it gives me like one hit wonder type vibes like you know one hit wonder where it's like one or two good songs and the rest you don't like but those one or two songs are really great but yeah, it's like if if an album gives me that sort of vibe, I'll actually down rank it for that reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's just it, you know... it has too much filler and too much and too much not crap, but too much junk to get to the good stuff. I'll actually down rank it for making me making me dig through all this the stuff to find the good stuff. I'll actually down rank you for that. Um, the first thing, the only thing that comes to mind is, is when I think is, is the new Rob Zombie. Uh, the, like the new Rob Zombie has, there's like 20 tracks, but then seven or eight of the tracks are all like intro gimmicky type, you know, intro like type kind of little uh, intro, pre-intro tracks. And there's like literally like eight, eight or 10 of those. I'm like, throw away all of those throw away the one little minute goof tracks let's strip all it away and keep the actual good out uh, the good tracks the way there's actually good tracks but but i'm frustrated finding the good tracks flipping through all the shit that i'm downgrading it now because of that because <laughs> the other thing is like because when i listen to certain songs sometimes i'll i'll listen through the whole song but there's only one part of the song like a note or a drum kick or, or a little bass flourish that I'll listen for that makes the whole song for me. Um, case in point that you, everybody would know would be like, um, you know, that little, um, oh, what's that? In uh, the Scorpion song, Wild Child. And we're like, right before the solo, there's that little drum, that little drum uh, beat where Klaus goes, yeah. And it's like, that's what I listen for in the whole song that like makes the song for me um there's other parts other parts in some scorpion songs where it's like 
yeah, I really love that part. Or like there's a certain note in a solo of a song that I find very interesting. Um, yeah, like in the, on the Vinnie Vincent Invasion, um, the first album, he plays a solo on one of the songs and there's a certain note that I listen for. And I think he hits a whammy bar and it's just like this, and the note is just like perfect. So I'll listen to the whole song and the whole song is, is good. But when I hear that note, I'm like, yeah, that's like the cherry on top of the ice cream. So that, that's just how I listen to music. It's weird. Yeah, uh, I definitely know what you mean, like these little nuances in a certain tracks or whatever that you that you pick out and that you're excited to hear. Or you... Just like one note or a series of like five notes yeah. that makes the whole thing for me, the whole listening experience, even though the rest of the song is not like just like those five notes. So if you had a song that was just those five notes that you could replicate throughout the whole song, that'd probably be the perfect song, right? Like the whole thing is the hook, which doesn't exist. Um, yeah. Because you have the songs and you have the hooks in the songs. You can't have a song that's just a hook. Uh -huh. Otherwise people would just be singing hooks. There'll be like three second snippets and that would be the song. There is lots of songs like that where it's kind of just the hook over and over for three minutes and they kind of just fill it with whatever they fill it with kind of mumble jumble kind of crap like they'll fill it with like a little um, backup chorus section and just kind of re -go, go over and over and over it. That's more of like pop songs and things like that. But uh, that's, that's the that's the beauty of uh, the heavy metal stuff is that you can have certain notes or certain series of notes or certain beats that are just so memorable. And they're like, they're very subtly put in the song. So it's like, you're listening to the song and like, you've heard the song for 20 years and you're like, that little flourish of notes there is really cool. What they did there, it's like syncopated or it's like overdubbed or it's something, you know, phased or something. And that's what I always listen, listen for hearing the same albums over and over again. I'm like, sometimes I'll hear a note, I'm like on a different remix or something. And I'm like, that's really cool what they did there. Well, yeah, I think Rage is actually full of uh, hooks and anthemic kind of choruses and memorable kind of hooks that PV is always coming up with that you, that you just wouldn't ever imagine. Even when you're just looking at the I guess that's a bad example of the Rage logo. Just I was saying, when you look at the Rage logo, you wouldn't expect that you're going to hear these kind of, kind of classic kind of melodic hooks, but then they're still heavy metal. They're not like pussy kind of like style. Like they're still heavy metal. But anyway, I know like you know, waiting for the moon. Uh, for example, uh, Reflections of a Shadow, Waiting for the Moon, like the hook and song on that, that could have been, that could be a huge hit song for any band if they were to write it and put it out. And just to, as long as if there was a music video and a push behind it, if people were to hear that, that could, that could blow up for any band. So um, that's just an example that I was throwing out, that Waiting for the Moon, where just one of those songs, like a hook that you that you can remember forever, where you, you're reading the song title and then you can hear this, you can hear the hook in your head when you're reading it. And like, that's when you know you got a gold, a song of gold. It's like uh, the thing that popped in my mind was the best way to, to, to describe Rage, their entire discography, is they're somewhere in between Slayer and pop music. They're they're somewhere in between there. They're not Slayer, but they're not pop. You know, they're not they're not they're not on either end of the spectrum, or they're not Cannibal Corpse, or they're not like they're not uh, Metallica. You know, that might be a better a little better description. They're like all these pockets of genres in between, and they're all super cool. Um. Uh... Yeah, and much like, much like, sorry, <laughs> much like Trapped, I, was, I really wanted to get 10 Years of Rage. I really liked this album, uh, 1994's 10 Years of Rage. Again, when, if someone's on a fan or something, you say the anniversary album, 10 Years of Rage, you'll think this is like a compilation of their first 10 years. It's not a compilation at all. It's all original material. 
they released in 1994. It's just like a, a studio album, but um, this is much like with the reason it, it 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 didn't quite make it in my top eight, although it's right there. It's it's like right there in that top eight, top ten. The reason it didn't, because again, like those first four, five, six tracks are just incredible, and then maybe some of the couple back tracks aren't as memorable. Just like the Trapped, where I would have loved to have gotten both these albums in there. I love this era. This is the Demani era there as well. But uh, yeah, just again, also and then also with my list, I want to be really diverse with Rage. They've been a they're a legacy band. They've been around since what eighty five to up to now, so however many years that is. And looking at my my list in particular, my eight that I chose, I had a very I had a fairly balanced list. I had some eighties, some nineties, some two thousands. So um, I had a nice balanced list. So I was fairly happy with that. Yeah, the twenties in there too. Yeah, so I was fairly happy with my little balanced list after I I made a uh, I wrote down my list a few times and minor shuffled a few times, but um, yeah, I would have liked to have gotten ten years of rage and trapped in there. Didn't quite make it, but definitely worth mentioning as well. Uh, we I did we did I did briefly talk about this speak of the dead where half the album is an instrumental, the top half and the second half is an actual real album. I definitely recommend ch checking that uh, the actual album part of it out. And I like this one. Be on the wall EP. Yeah, this is this is the ration. Yeah, I was gonna say because that's they put out the two EPs in a row. This is extended power and that I think in a row. Yeah, and then I, I this one almost made my list. I freaking love that it's first normal. track, Firestorm. Ah, I know I need that. I really want that rage. I don't have it. It's one of the ones I don't have. I got it years ago for seven ninety nine. God damn! I definitely would buy that for eight bucks. <laughs> and then uh, they did a. I guess this was from only available in Germany. Although that that rage has a weird, per, a weird mix to it. Actually, I didn't like the mix on that one as much. Or maybe it's the online digital copy that I have because I actually don't have the CD, but maybe it's the copy I have, but that one has a weird uh, mix, production mix on the mixing link. Well, I think I think this is actually a Russian bootleg. This is like a compilation. It's oh, yeah, I've never seen that. Give dich nie off. Oof, oof, I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's CD maximum. Oh, so yeah, yeah. They're, uh, that's not, they're, it's still an official C maximum is still a, they're, they're real, still an official release. So, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty official to me. Just, uh, you know, anything that I've had from Russia, I just, I mean, I have a fair amount of stuff and it's like, I just think it's maximum. Out. Still, they're, they're still official releases. They're like, official. Just because. Yeah, like I, 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 it definitely is a touchy subject. Like anytime you mention CD in Russia, people are just like bootleg, bootleg. But like official Russian versions do exist. Well, it says the CD official, must not be sold outside Russia, yeah. CIS, and Baltic states. Yeah, I, I got a bunch of those. Yeah, you can still have official Russian versions, but then um, carved in stone. We didn't mention. Yeah, that's a good one too, isn't um, that one's not a orchestra one? I thought that was an orchestra one. I don't think yeah. so. I haven't listened to it in a long time. I know there's there's a couple I get confused between if they would if they're a, a symphonic an instru a symphonic one or not. Oh yeah, this this is this is this is symphonic. It does have symphony in it. Yeah, I thought so. I know. Yes. A lot of the covers kind of start looking the same after a while. That one, too, yeah, with Missing Link. That one and Missing Link is pretty much other than the color. Have, um, I had 13 here somewhere. I was going to say, yeah. I'm holding on to Devil Strike Back here, uh, 2016, 2013. Oh, I don't know if I have that one. 2016. This one's cool. This is 2016, so it is uh, one of the fairly newer ones. 
Um, and it's, you know, just your typical consistent rage here. I use your X on one, one, one. Man, this is a digit, digit pack. Is that and 13? Yeah, that'd be 13. 13, yeah. There's the, that's the usual cover. That's a symphonic one too, I think. Probably. Yeah, that's a that's a violin because there's a violin on the front character on the front cover there. Yeah, I just find all that I find all the stuff that they do, all the experimentation with the, the orchestra is uh, amazing and very interesting. There's a lot of bands they try to do it to be cool or edgy, and it's just you know massive failure. But Rage does it consistently, and I think they do it pretty well. Yeah, this one's a good consistent newer one, but uh, yeah, you know, you're getting sold in the ridge. Um, yeah, there we go. I think we probably went way longer than I expected. I was like, oh, it's for you maybe half an hour, who knows? So I think we're way over that. But uh, um, yeah, I think we should probably do a wrap the show there. I think we should probably consider this the essential rage albums. I, I think I'd be comfortable with saying that. Hey, eh? would you be comfortable with saying that? Yeah, I think we covered, covered, them, covered them pretty well. The essential rage album so i'm going to go ahead and use that as the title essential rage albums so yeah we covered the essential rage albums we'll wrap up say our goodbyes and get out of here um thank you for doing the show david rock and roll big dog thanks for doing the show thanks for everyone that watches in the future it's always nice to see you <laughs> <laughs> Double, double lens, double lens. There's no. Oh, there's no actually lens in it. No, <laughs> no lens. Uh, their glasses and that. The prop. Yeah, I just noticed that now there's no actually lens. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we, he, he will do his lensless goodbye. <laughs> lensless. Is that was lensless a word? <laughs> Never actually, never actually came across that lensless, because lens, lens, though. lens is a word, lens, and then I want the lens with if you were without a lens, unlensed. What if you're without a lens? You're, you're lens lens. You're lenseless. So you're, you're, <laughs> we got you're lens lensless. Lensless. So okay, um, yeah. Subscribe, Mosh, all that kind of good stuff. Peace, love, rock and roll, all that kind of good stuff, and goodbye.